Hello and welcome to the Quick News Daily Podcast, where I give you the facts first, no clickbait stories, just real news that matters to real people. Today we've got a lot of updates on stories I've covered in the past, including Alexei Navalny, Brianna Taylor, and Michael Caputo. Then we have Trump lying during a town hall, because of course... And a really disturbing story, if it's true. Folks, there's not a minute to waste, so let's get caught up. Thankfully, Alexei Navalny seems to be progressing well after being poisoned with a nerve agent. Navalny is that leader from Russia who opposes Putin. And yesterday, he was able to make a post on Instagram. In the post, he mostly talked about breathing on his own, since he's off a ventilator now, which is good. His spokesperson also confirmed that he'll be returning to Russia when he recovers. I don't know, man. He is much, much more brave than I would be. I think I would keep at least four countries between me and Russia if I got poisoned with a nerve agent. I can only make sense of this by assuming that he thinks the extra attention on him will mean it's harder to kill him without people knowing. In my opinion, that's kind of a risky bet. I mean, they don't even know for sure how he was poisoned this time, so I bet it's even easier if Navalny is in Russia again. By the way, it's been reported that Germany, France, and Sweden have all independently confirmed that Navalny was indeed poisoned by the Novichok nerve agent. In what's being called a historical settlement, the family of Brianna Taylor was awarded $12 million, as well as the promise that police reforms would be put into place, including reforms such as establishing a housing credit program in the hopes of having officers live where they serve, using social workers to go along on certain police calls, and requiring commanders to review and approve search warrants. Brianna's mom seemed most grateful for the police reforms, saying, quote, The police reform measures that we were able to get passed as part of this settlement mean so much more to my family, our community, and to Brianna's legacy. All that said, the mayor said the city is not admitting wrongdoing in the incident. So, you pass a law banning no-knock warrants... Then you settle a lawsuit out of court, promising $12 million in police reforms, and you still haven't arrested the officers who killed Brianna, or even admitted wrongdoing? It kind of sounds like those other two things admit wrongdoing, but hey, that's just me. The man who is allegedly her killer, former officer Brett Hankison, is still out on the loose. Well, just a couple of days after mentioning him, good friend of the show Michael Caputo is once again back under fire. Politico is reporting that yesterday he held an emergency staff meeting to address rumors that have been going on around him, I guess, but mostly that uh, disturbing Facebook Live video he posted over the weekend and then deleted his account. In the video, he claims a lot of stuff, but uh, let's take a listen to just a little bit of it. Whether it's the Buffalo News or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or or uh, any of these media outlets, um, I'm under siege. Uh, it's been going on for a couple of weeks, and uh, I don't care um, because I have the president's support. I know that because he's told me so. Uh, they're after me for two reasons, and when a hybrid, I want to. Uh, I want to tell you what they are so you understand. And you understand that uh, I'm not going anywhere. They're going to have to kill me. And unfortunately, I think that's where this is going. The partisan Democrats, the conjugal media, and the scientists, the deep state scientists, want America sick through November. They cannot afford for us to have any good news before November because they're already losing. Donald Trump right now, if the election were held today, would win. Okay, so uh, he's claiming that he might take a medical leave, sort of uh, a convenient way to get out of there. Political said that he's already on thin ice with Trump, and that was before the Facebook Live thing. So if I had to put money on it, I would bet that he's going to be taking a medical leave here pretty quickly. A former HHS official also told Politico that Caputo has long complained of the stress caused by having been mentioned in the special counsel's investigation on Russian interference in the 2016 election. It also says Caputo also disputed anonymous White House criticism about his mental health, 
saying that some of his comments have been taken out of context, and concluded the meeting by encouraging his staff to listen to music by the Grateful Dead. Okay, alright, so, uh, hmm. That sounds like a, a normal person who is completely and mentally all there, right? Like, that doesn't sound like anyone who would have uh, mental health issues. Just, of course it does. Now here's where we have to separate things, or at least I'm going to. If he truly has these mental health problems, he really needs to go get them checked out. He needs to leave his position and uh, never come back. And I don't ever want to make fun of someone for having mental health issues because you just never know. You never know what's going on with someone. That said, if his mental health issue is that he's annoyed and paranoid of being investigated because he was a criminal and worked with the Russian government during 2016, which I think it's pretty clear that everyone did. I mean, he's an associate of Roger Stone, who was indicted and convicted on seven felonies. And even though he got his sentence commuted and he's out spewing lies again, because uh, that's just who Roger Stone is, Roger Stone is still a felon. So, again, if his mental health issues is just paranoia because he's a criminal, and criminals usually get investigated, I got no love lost for him. But man, if he truly believes what he's saying in those Facebook videos, he really does have problems. This disturbing if true story is the one about an ICE detention center in Georgia where one doctor there is accused of performing mass hysterectomies on these immigrants being held there, as well as refusing to test detainees for COVID-19 and shredding medical records. This is a sort of whistleblower complaint it's coming from a nurse who works at that facility. It's the Irwin County Detention Center, again in Georgia. Apparently in the complaint, she says that the gynecologist is called, quote, the uterus collector, and was performing, quote, mass hysterectomies, end quote. Now, it's still early in the story, and maybe by the end of the day today, more will have come out about it, because even yesterday, some of the bigger networks were starting to pick up on it. So uh, we'll be able to see if, if there's more here if there is a, you know, substantial truth to it. But, uh, but yeah, this is one to watch closely because earlier in, in June, when Trump was gassing peaceful protesters, it was like living in the uh, V for Vendetta world. Now, if this is true, it's like The Handmaid's Tale. So it's like the crossover you would never want, like V for Vendetta and Handmaid's Tale. So, like, what, H for Handmaid's Tale? I don't know. But it's like the worst of both worlds. Both of those stories are back in the 80s, so at that time you're like, okay, these are a little bit extreme. I don't think this could ever happen. Maybe the ideas are there, but uh, it would never happen. And then 2020 is like, hey man, hold my beer. So this is one story that I'll be watching closely and updating you on as we hear more and more uh, either evidence or, you know, evidence to disprove it. A quick update to the Florida polling problems that Biden has had, supposedly, as well as the Bloomberg cash infusion in the state. The good news about those polls coming out early is that everyone sort of got, not even sort of, everyone got freaked out about them, so now resources are absolutely pouring into Florida. And Mike Madrid, one of the founders of the Lincoln Project, who was in charge of political operations for them, confirmed yesterday that they will indeed be moving into Florida as well moving some of their operations, some of their ads. I saw that they already released a Spanish language one just yesterday, I think. So now they're even joining the fight. Obviously, that's really good news. And uh, thank goodness that this came out so early that everyone sort of had time to course correct and adjust and focus their eyes on Florida. Because like I said, it's all about Florida. And if Trump doesn't get Florida, good night. Just another sign of the times and what a perilous position we're actually in. The Scientific American has broken with its tradition of not endorsing anyone for president. In their 175 year history, the Scientific American has never endorsed anyone for president, but they broke that rule yesterday and they endorsed Joe Biden, citing the fact that Trump has completely ignored all of the science on climate change, as well as openly admitted to ignoring the science on coronavirus to help his reelection chances. Man, if even the uh, scientists are getting involved, you know we're in a really, really tough spot as a country. <music> Lastly here, 
The Trump town hall that took place on ABC last night, it was moderated by George Stephanopoulos, and it went about as well as you thought it might have. Trump constantly lying. Sometimes the voters were actually uh, fact-checking him in real time, which was nice. Here's one of the highlights. The wearing of masks has proven to lessen the spread of COVID. Um, why don't you support a mandate for national mask wearing, and why don't you wear a mask more often? Well, I do wear them when I have to and when I'm in hospitals and other locations. But I, I will say this. Uh, they said at the Democrat convention they're going to do a national mandate. They never did it because they've checked out and they didn't do it. And a, qu a good question is you ask, like Joe Biden, they said we're going to do a ma national mandate on masks. He's called on all governors to have them. It is a state well, responsibility. Well, no, but he, he didn't do it. I mean, he never did it. Now, uh, there is, by the way, a lot of people don't want to wear masks. There are a lot of people think the masks are not good. And there are a lot of people that, as an example, who you have... Who are those people? Well, I'll tell you who those people are. Waiters, they come over and they serve you and they have a mask. And I saw it the other day where they were serving me. And they're playing with a mask. I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying what happens. They're playing with a mask. So the mask is over and they're touching it. And, put, and then they're touching the plate. Uh, that can't be good. There are a lot of people, if you look at Dr. Fauci's original statement, you look at a lot of people, CDC, you look at a lot of people's original statement, they said very strongly, George, don't wear masks. Then all of a sudden they went to wear masks. The concept of a mask is good, but it also does, you're constantly touching it, you're touching your face, you're touching plates. There are people that don't think masks are good. Yep, because Joe Biden is president who could have done that. It's you, man. Like, you're the one who could have done a national mask mandate. You're the president for now, not Joe Biden. Another one here. Right here, she's from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you actually haven't voted before. How are you? Hello, hi. My question is, um, if you believe it's the president's responsibility to protect America, why would you downplay a pandemic that is known to disproportionately harm low-income families and minority communities. Yeah. Well, I didn't downplay it. I actually, in many ways, I upplayed it in terms of action. My did action was very strong. Yourself, yeah, because you... what I did was, uh, with China, I put a ban on. With Europe, I put a ban on. And we would have lost thousands of more people had I not put the ban on. So that was called action, not with the mouth, but in actual fact. We did a very, very good job when we put that ban on. Whether you call it talent or luck, it was very important. So we saved a lot of lives when we did that. There were holes in the ban, and the European ban didn't come for another month. Well, they were Americans. I mean, the holes in were if you have somebody in China that's an American citizen, we had to let them in. I mean, there were. This one, I mean, it's just too easy. I wanted to always play it down. Yeah, that's your own voice on the tape, man. You admitted to downplaying it, not anyone else. Last one here. With time, it goes many away. deaths, and you'll develop you'll develop herd like a herd mentality. It's going to be it's going to be herd developed, and that's going to happen. And if we did follow that approach, I think we might have two million people dead. The fact checker for CNN, Daniel Dale, who made a huge splash after the uh, Republican National Convention and Trump's speech when he went on that like three minute rant about all the lies in that speech. Well, he was back at it last night again, this time for this town hall. He does address things that I've already brought up here, but it's just easier to let the man go and not really interrupt his uh, stream of consciousness. Let's take a listen. Daniel, let me bring you in because you've been busy fact checking this town hall. What stood out to you? There is just so much lying, Don. I'm going to go quickly here. So literally just stop me whenever you need to. He said, again, Democrats won't protect people with pre-existing conditions. That is nonsense. As a voter told him, Democrats created those protections. He insisted he didn't praise China on the virus. He did so repeatedly. We know that. He claimed that nobody knew at the time he was praising China that seniors were especially susceptible to the virus. That was one of the first things we learned out of China and out of Italy and out of the U.S. He claimed that uh, Biden said in March that the pandemic was, quote, totally over-exaggerated. I can find no 
evidence that Biden ever said that. He said that Winston Churchill was kind of like him playing down stuff because he went on rooftops in London during the Nazi bombing and told people everything's going to be good. Churchill did not speak from the rooftops and did not say everything's going to be good. He warned of suffering and danger. Trump said that he fired James Mattis. Mattis resigned. He said that protesters took over 20 percent of Seattle. It was a six block area, nowhere close to 20 percent. He took credit again for sending in the National Guard in Minneapolis, uh, saying that it, this happened after a week and a half of violence there. It was not even close to a week and a half. It was days. And the Democratic governor is the one who activated the guard. He said he essentially repealed Obamacare by getting rid of the individual mandate. Not even close to true with the Medicaid expansion, pre-existing conditions, protections, other stuff remains. He said the cupboards were empty of ventilators. His administration admits he inherited about 16,000 from Obama. He did his usual false boast about so-called bans on travel from China and Europe. They were not complete bans. He said stocks are owned by, quote, everybody. Just about half of Americans own stocks. He repeated his nonsense about testing causing cases. Testing merely reveals and helps fight cases. He said that Biden has agreed to a Bernie Sanders a style socialized health care. He fought Sanders on that issue. He has very much not agreed to a Sanders style plan. And Don, this is a preliminary list. I have hours of fact checking tonight to do because there's even more than this. So this was just a fire hose of lying again from the president. Do you need a drink of water? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, I'm like spitting out <laughs> my camera. Here, was, so I, I apologize to the viewers. It was like just what an hour, about an hour and a half town hall. And <laughs> yes. Like every like every oh line or every other line was just false or misleading. It was crazy. Okay, and then well, let's talk about what he said about crime. Listen to what the president t- said about crime tonight. Here it is. If you're going to stop crime, we have to give the the respect back to the police that they deserve. They've done a fantastic job in so many locations, but then bad things happen. Look at New York. New York was a very safe city. Rudy Giuliani did a fantastic job. The city was safe, and then all of a sudden we have a mayor. He starts cutting the police force, and crime is up 100 percent, 150 percent. I saw one form of crime up 300 percent. What are the facts, Daniel? So there have been spikes in certain kinds of crime in New York City this year, particularly shootings, where there's been a a, a more than 100 percent increase, not a 300 percent increase, but substantial. The thing to remember, though, is that crime has fallen hugely since even Giuliani's final year. So Giuliani presided over a decrease. Then there's been a subsequent big decrease. So last year in 2019, there were fewer than half the murders under Bill de Blasio than there were in the last year of Giuliani. So yes, this year has been an increase, but the city is still way safer than it was in Giuliani's last year in 2001. Hmm. Well, there you go. Don't let facts get in the way of a good story. That's it for me here on this midway point of the week. You can do the usual things, rate and review the show wherever you're listening, as well as leaving personal feedback from me with that Google form I linked to in the episode description. The feedback goes straight to me anonymously, and uh, you can have a real impact on what the show looks like. So make sure to take advantage there. Otherwise, that's about it, I think. As always, stay safe, make your plan to vote, fill out your census, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow. 